What's going on guys? So I have an interesting project out here at the property today. It involves a pallet. It involves these bolts with eyelets at the end of them. And it involves a chain. What do you guys think I'm making? Anyways, if this works out the way that I'm hoping it will, I'll have a pretty useful tool out here. So let's see how it works out. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so is this what you thought I was building? I used an old pallet. This is a heavy duty pallet. It's not one of the super cheap ones. And I attached some extra wood to the bottom of it to kind of act as a giant washer, if that makes sense. I put these little eyelet anchor bolts in here. And um, yeah, these things are rated to 2,000 pounds each in terms of working load. And I have a 9,000 pound capacity hoist system right here with a loop on the end that hopefully will fit properly around the back of the bucket on the excavator. And we may be able to use this to hoist some things up high that I currently can't. So we're gonna check it out. I am actually hunting down a way to convert a quick release and the John Deere wedge style attachment to make a fork attachment for the excavator. So that'll be really cool. And that'll give me the ability to go up much higher than what this will. But if this works for me, I already have a use for it. And I know it doesn't look like it's built super, super strong, but what I was really, really cautious of doing here is to make sure that this will lift at least what I wanna lift without any failure. But I'm only gonna put a couple hundred pounds on here max, and this pallet should be able to hold well above that, especially the way we have it set up. But let's test it out. Let's get it hooked up to the excavator and see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, 
I hopped out, got it connected. Kind of going beyond my camera now. Check that out. Curl the bucket under a little bit so chains are straight. Check that out. It might just work for me. I might have to test it first though, before I put something expensive on it. That is pretty cool. Okay, so the hook on the back of the bucket's a little too small. The hole is a little too small, so I'm gonna put it around the tooth of the bucket and see if this actually helps a little bit. I have a little patio heater in a box there. It weighs about 50 pounds. I figured that would be a good trial here. See, the problem is, is I can't get the, the tooth of that bucket to curl up enough to really give me the height I need without possibly having it come off. I do like that it's balanced pretty well. Yeah, we'll probably put it back on the hook and then I'll just secure it better. Okay, we're back with the hook on the back of it now. that may work so that is high enough off the ground for what I would need definitely uh, sways a little bit so I'll have to figure that piece of it out but it's balanced really nice and well and that might get me uh, what I'm trying to accomplish here Okay, so you can probably figure out what I'm trying to do here. Not with this, but with something else that was already featured on my channel. And uh, it'll probably give you a relatively good idea of what this platform will help me with, hopefully. If you still haven't figured it out yet, I'll say it's kind of like a project we already did, but we used the bucket instead. that out. Just have to do very slow movements. And we're good. 
that should work out reasonably well in theory. Okay, so I've moved the picnic table out of the way, grabbed the tractor. Picnic table probably weighs a good 250 pounds. And uh, I got a spot here that I can move the excavator to, so I can position it kind of where it's going to be whenever we actually do this project and see how everything's going to work. So let's move the excavator over real quick and let's test it out and see if I can get this where I need to put it. So I'll be loading the object at ground level. I'll be hoisting it up like this. thing here is that if I want to lower it in really really small increments I can just curl the bucket in a little bit that's about where it needs to be right there I can even move it back a little bit more if I need to Right about there. So that's kind of the, the idea of what this is gonna be used for. I think most of you probably have figured out by now, especially if you watch some recent videos on some products that I reviewed that weren't on the RV. So this is gonna be pretty cool. Let's take a look at it from the outside. Okay, so we have the John Deere 50G right here. We have that as high as it will go. You can see both the boom and the stick are extended out pretty much straight. Let's go around to the other side. Check that out. I think that should work out pretty dang well. What will work out even better is whenever I get my fork attachment. Let me show you what I'm doing about that. Okay, so what I have here is a quick attachment assembly. This is actually made to convert from a John Deere quick attachment to a skid steer quick attachment. It uses kind of these wedge plates that go underneath the front of attachments like my forks over there. And then in that box are the two pieces that need to be welded together to create the, uh, the wedge style coupler, the quick attachment for the John Deere 50G excavator. So my welding buddy, who you guys have seen on the channel, he's actually the one that welded the hooks over here. He welded the hook that's on the back of the bucket. And uh, he's going to take this. He's going to extend it out so the width of the outer edges of these are 44 inches apart, which is what you want them to be to, to fit the inside of that fork attachment right there. He's going to weld a solid plate there. He's going to build a bracket off of it. And he's going to put the John Deere quick attachment onto that bracket so I can hook it up to my excavator and have some forks on the front, which will enable me to lift things up even much higher than what uh, this hoist system allows because the length of the chains and the space you need between the chains to be able to load things on and off is kind of a limiting factor. But that's going to be a project coming up pretty soon. I'll definitely show you guys what that's about. That's going to be super, super cool because the excavator has a tremendous amount more lift capacity than this does, and it's going to give me the ability to move things to positions that I just can't get this, and I'll be able to do it for relatively low cost. This entire assembly right here was like 200 bucks. Then those wings over there were like 65 bucks. For about $265, I'm going to have 
an attachment that would normally cost 1500 actually no close to like $2,500 and then my buddy who I will compensate will build this all out for me so I can attach it to the front of the excavator which is going to be really nice it's going to give me a lot of capability let's hop on up the lippert on the go ladder and see what it looks like up here You can see my two 200 watt solar panels there, air conditioning unit, and you probably figured out by now, that's what we're gonna be swapping out. So we have the new Furion Chill Cube inverter air conditioning unit that you guys saw on my channel at Lippert's headquarters. That will be swapping out for this Furion Chill standard 15,000 BTU air conditioning unit. And this should help us tremendously. Anyways guys, what'd you think of the project? Pretty cool, huh? Hopefully it works out as, as effortlessly and seamlessly as I'm hoping it will but you never know until you actually start doing this kind of stuff guys if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon